This is a quick history of the different atomic models that have been proposed to explain what an atom is. The first was in 1807 by John Dalton, and he thought atoms were solid balls of matter, that if you broke down an atom small, a uh, sample smaller and smaller, eventually you'd reach a point where you couldn't break it down anymore. He came up with the Dalton's atomic theory, and one of the things he said was that this is the smallest piece, that there's nothing smaller. Ninety years later, J.J. Thompson discovered an electron. And when he discovered an electron, this was a piece smaller than an atom. He figured out that they had a negative charge, but an atom overall doesn't have charge, so he figured that there must be these little negative charges floating around inside of a big positive charge. This is sometimes called the plum pudding model because it looked like little pieces of plums or raisins floating around in pudding, a common English dessert. In 1911, Rutherford came up with his model, and he changed the earlier Thompson model because he discovered the nucleus. Now, protons were what he discovered, this positively charged nucleus. He found this by doing something called the gold foil experiment, where he shot out char positively charged alpha particles at a sheet of foil and noticed that some were deflected back. So there had to be a dense, small, uh, positively charged sphere in the center of an atom and an atom had to be mostly empty space. And so he came up with the idea of the nucleus and so sometimes his model is called the nuclear model. One of the problems with the Rutherford model was that it didn't explain these strange colored lines that they got from different atoms. And they always appeared in the same locations. So another model was needed. Two years later, Niels Bohr came up with his model. It's also called the planetary model. And in this model, he envisioned the electrons being on rings around the nucleus and they had to stay in these tracks moving around the nucleus. Sometimes it was shown flat like this picture and sometimes there was an attempt to make it look more 3D. The problem with this model is that if this was the only thing going on electrons would slow down and eventually be attracted into that positive nucleus and just be sucked into the nucleus, which doesn't happen. About a decade later, in 1926, Erwin Schrodinger came up with what we currently call the quantum mechanical model. And in this model, electrons move in both a wave, but they are also a charged particle. So they have both wave and particle properties to them. He envisioned this as an electron cloud where the probability of an electron is higher in some locations than others. So you would find electrons more often in the high probability areas. This is a summary of the five different models that we've gone over today. John Dalton envisioned the atom as a solid ball with not anything smaller than the atom itself. J.J. Thompson found electrons and then envisioned it as a positive ball with negative electrons embedded in it. Rutherford discovered the nucleus and so he, he incorporated protons into his model. Bohr added the rings that electrons occupy and finally Schrodinger came up with his quantum mechanical model, which is our belief today.